Home or Face the Fire by Ja, the survival plan for all human plus beings. Chapter 2, The Prison Reform School with No Bars, Laws of Karma, Cause and Effect, Sowing and Reaping equals just desserts. Evil be to him who thinks it. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. Matthew 7, 1 and 2. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye met, it shall be measured to you again. Luke 6.37 Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall not be condemned. Forgive, and ye shall be forgiven. If you judge anyone by any judgment other than those that God gave to Moses, you will be judged in the same way by God. Let him, who is not a sinner, throw the first stone. No one threw a stone, because all human plus beings are sinners. Matthew 7.11 If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Why? After making a study of the situation, God and the elders of the Morning Star decided to create a reform school far enough away where, for the chosen period, they could safely try to teach Lucifer and his angels to be good, whereupon they could come home. Deuteronomy 28 And it shall come to pass, if you shall hearken diligently unto the voice of the I Am Yahweh, your God, to observe and to do all his commandments, which I command you this day, that the I Am Yahweh, thy God, will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Revelations 2.28 And I will give him the morning star. Surah 29.6 And if any strive with might and main, they do so for their own souls, for the I Am Yahweh is free of all needs from all of creation. The objective was for each and every one of them to learn individually to be like God. Matthew 5.48 and 1917. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. And he said unto him, Why callest me good? There is no one good but one, that is, God. But if thou will enter into life, keep the commandments. The objective was for each and every one of them to learn individually to be like God, which later on in history, because people had lost their way and couldn't find it again by themselves, had to be demonstrated by Jesus, whose teachings taught the only way that you can be taught. I am the way home, the truth and the life. Not one man can come to the Father home unless he is like me. John 14, 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Not one man cometh unto the Father except by me. That is, unselfish, humble, kind, loving, and considerate to everyone, including his enemies, and willing to sacrifice his own human life for the benefit of everyone. This needs 100% faith in God's promise that there is life after human death, and you trust him enough to follow Jesus' example to earn your right to regain your divinity, immortality, and go home. There would be no point in learning to be good enough to go to heaven if it was not where you came from originally and your real home, would there? Complete faith can only come from knowing God personally, which can only be achieved by learning to communicate directly with him and by doing his will. Hosea 6.6 6. For I desired mercy and not sacrifice in the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. God has never wanted people to believe in him. He has always wanted you to get to know him. Jeremiah 9.24 But let him that glorify glory in this, that he understands and knows me, and that I am the I am, which exercises loving kindness, judgment, and righteousness in the earth. For in these things I delight, saith the I am. John 17.3 And this is life eternal, that they might know you, and only true God, the Christ the Savior, whom you have sent. Planet Earth was chosen for the prison because it was far enough away, being on the far side of the galaxy, had no, quote, intelligent life forms, 
but was capable of supporting crude animal life forms and, in its own way, was a beautiful planet. Revelation 12.9 And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels, you, Luke 9.55, were cast out with him, Matthew 25.41. But he turned and rebuked them, and said, Ye know not what kind of spirit you are of. For the Son of Man is not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, you that do not do God's will. Surah 17.8 It may be that your Lord may yet show mercy unto you, but if you revert to your sins, we shall revert to our punishments. And we have made hell, the earth, a prison, Enoch 18.15, for those who reject all faith, Enoch 18.15. Then the angel said, This place, until the consummation of heaven and earth, will be the prison for the stars and the host of heaven, Revelation 12.7-9. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, Lucifer, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world, was cast out to earth, and his angels, you, were cast out with him. Surah 83.7 no, surely the record of the wicked is preserved in their prison record. It was also planned to create beautiful surroundings which would have many lessons built into them. And as then constructed, with these factors in mind, nature, both vegetal and animal, was to give clues to those who would look for them, seek and ye shall find. John 8.32 Ye do the deeds of your father, then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one Father, even God. The seasons of nature were intended to teach that spring with its birth, both of vegetation and animals, which was followed by summer, the time of growth, followed by autumn, the time of maturing and consolidation, in turn followed by winter, the time of withering and dying, snow-colored hair and wrinkles, was to be followed again by spring and rebirth. All of this was designed to show you about human reincarnation or perpetual human life after death until you either get it right, regain your divinity and go home, or run out of time and are executed. Animal life would teach male superiority as the provider and protector and caring for and rearing of the young. The showing of love and affection, the code of conduct, and respect for parents. Then, old age, the roles are reversed. The children take care of their parents, teaching humility to both, the aged because of frailty and dependence, the young because they look at their parents and see what the future holds for them. Nature teaches self-perfection, to teach the soul to perfect itself, weeding out the freaks and the weak and imperfections, only the healthy surviving, the natural selection of the most perfect specimens as partners to keep the breed healthy so that it will survive. The natural harmony and balance between the two sides of nature, that is, animal and vegetation, living together and helping each other to survive, to teach the living with nature, helping it and each other. One being more dependent upon the other, that is, animals have to live with nature to survive and are therefore more dependent on nature than nature is on animals, but both help each other to survive. To teach the animals depend on nature, and nature depends on animals and God. Therefore, animals should protect and live with nature and God to ensure their own survival. Nature is to supply the means for food, water, and shelter, which makes up three of the five basic necessities, or God-given rights, human rights, the fourth of equal importance being free will. Free will, freedom, to decide whether to continue to follow Satan or to follow God's guidance and to learn to be good without being forced, but instead by loving encouragement, is of the utmost importance. This encouragement and teaching from within 
intuition, by the good voice that everyone has and by life, circumstances and surroundings, has to be accompanied by free will to choose. If God forced everyone to do things, they would never learn. He would have no way of knowing whether they were being good because they wanted to or because he was forcing them. The fifth God-given right is the right to self-defense from evil. There was also to be a perfect reward and punishment system, which was to be almost instantaneous, allowing time for repentance, and exactly divine justice from God himself, so that anyone seeking could find perfect karmic law, as Eastern cultures now call it, and sowing and reaping, as the Western cultures call it, but both are only cause and effect, receiving their just deserts. At any given moment in time, a soul would need to be, and is, exactly where it has earned the right to be, by all its previous actions and thoughts, in eternal time, and for the circumstances to change, to coincide with what was deserved. This would teach and encourage the good, and punish the evil, so that those who opened their spiritual eyes, and sought to, would be able to make sense of their lives, past, present, and future. This would then encourage childlike, not childish, faith and trust in God and doing His will, leading to even more dependence and closeness to Him, and yet more faith until they came to know and love Him. This is perfectly symbolized by the ancient Roman symbol of the mirror for Venus with their goddess of love. The mirror reflects exactly what it is shown, and so does God, the ruler of Venus, the morning star, in faith good and evil. If the soul gives 5% faith to God, he repays it with 5%, and so on, up to 100% faith, receiving 100% repayment from God. This faith in the unseen and the magic of having personal miracles, which were previously thought to be only coincidences, have the effect of an addictive drug and that heals absolutely everything with no ill effects. The addiction increases the childlike faith and the destruction of selfishness until 100% faith is achieved, along with a spiritual joy lasting unlike human fragile and therefore temporary happiness that no one can take away from you if you have it, and a cup that runneth over, total fulfillment, no emptiness, so full of the healing light and love that you cannot help but overflow towards others wanting to share the experience with them because it's so wonderful. God being the answer to every question and the cure for every ill is the only thing that every soul needs because with God a soul has everything it needs. God being the source and supply of light and everything good. Matthew 6:33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Luke 12:31. But rather seek the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. God is the best friend that any soul can ever have forever, and he is with you 24 hours a day, wherever you go. No human friend can be with you 24 hours a day, every day, wherever you go. Your human friends cannot protect you from the devil, and really, they are all bad. Whereas God is good, and the ruler of the universe, the most powerful force in the whole of creation. What an amazing friend to have. There will also be higher and lower spiritual levels, like human schools, which go from nursery to university. Mark 12, 32 to 34. And the lawyer said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all your heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after this durst ask him any question. With A to Z classes and all grades in between. What humans call intelligence and levels of intelligence or awareness are really spiritual levels. The upper levels were to help and to teach the lower ones, by example and not words. Whilst all levels are being taught by God, the head teacher, all the students should be helping one another and becoming less selfish. Love your neighbor as much as yourself. Matthew 19.19 19. 
Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, thereby earning more points and responsibilities, climbing higher up the spiritual ladder until they become enough like God, like Jesus demonstrated, graduate and come home. John 8.32 King of Kings Bible, John 8.23 you do the deeds of your father, then say to him, We be not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. To be able to operate the almost instantaneous reward and punishment system, to enclose the prison and run it efficiently, God surrounded the earth with an invisible protection against escape, gravity, and with spirit, therefore invisible to the human eye, guards slash jailers, guardian angels, to ensure that no one could ever escape and no one ever has. This force field contains the astral plane, paradise, which is full of light beings and justice. The guards being invisible would also help to persuade the evil fallen angels to have respect, childlike faith, and trust in the Lord's protection from the equally invisible devil whilst being themselves unable to attack what they could not see or touch. Then, when, because of lack of faith in God's protection, he allows evil and mishaps to occur in their lives, they will suddenly feel afraid, need to ask for his help, and receive it, bringing an ever-increasing faith, trust, and nearness to God. For those who had opened their spiritual eyes and were seeking to make sense of their lives. For those who do not believe enough in or seek God constantly, he sends calamities into their lives. How many people who say that they do not believe in God when suddenly, in fear for their lives, cry, God, please help me. If they talk to him all the time, as they should, these calamities would never happen because there would not be a need for them, as God would not have to forcibly remind them to talk to him. Once the crisis is over, most people do not even have the common decency and good manners to thank him for having helped them solve their problem by telepathically telling them what to do to solve the problem or by sending them exactly the right type and amount of physical help they need at exactly the right time and they go off blindly ignoring him again until the next calamity. There are none so blind as those who refuse to see. Open your spiritual eyes and see things as they really are. Don't believe your own human eyes because Satan uses them to deceive you and lie to you. A blind man sees with his spiritual eyes only. That is why the blind are able to recognize Jesus as written in the New Testament. How much more fortunate than the blind are you who have not had the gift of sight removed, and yet you are more blind than they are. Their sight had been removed so that they would learn to appreciate spiritual values instead of worldly material values, as they had done previously which had earned them the punishment of being blind. Faith is the key that opens every door. Knock with true faith, and it shall be opened unto you. Matthew 7, 7 and 8. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And without it you will live in darkness and fear until your execution on the last day. Once the preparations are completed, the prisoners were sent to earth. Isaiah 14:12. Thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning star. How are you cut down to earth, which did weaken the nations? Luke 10:18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from the heavens. Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out to the earth, and his angels, you, were cast out with him. Quran, Surah 17, 8. It may be that your Lord may yet show mercy unto you, but if you revert to your sins, we shall revert to our punishments and we have made hell, the earth, a prison for you, for those who reject all faith. Surah 83, 7. Know surely the record of the wicked is preserved in their prison record. For the preset period of time, 
Revelations 12, 12. Therefore rejoice, you heavens and you that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time, 6,000 years. But that is until the last day, judgment day, Armageddon, or release, if they learn to be good. Lucifer and his angels, you, were locked in for a short time in eternal time. Revelations 12, 12, 6,000 years. Surah 74. The angels and the spirit ascend unto him in a day the mere measure whereof is as 50,000 years. A prison just to restrain evil angels would be a senseless waste of time and in order to operate as a reformatory. It would need to function like a school. God does not permit any unnecessary waste as demonstrated by Jesus after the feeding of the 5,000 when he told the disciples to collect up all the crumbs so that there would be no waste. John 6:12. When they were filled and he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. And so, out of love, wisdom, compassion, and mercy, he decided to construct a reformatory to teach his rebellious subjects or children to be good so that they could come home as soon as possible. However, he would have to be sure that they have genuinely changed and will not cause any more trouble, but live in love and harmony with the other inhabitants of the Morning Star, good gods, angels. He also wants his guards to be able to come home too. All of this discord makes God very sad and he looks over the world and weeps because he wants everyone to be good and come home so that he can, metaphorically speaking, kill the fatted calf and have a celebration for the return of all his prodigal sons just as the father in Luke 15 to 24 does. For this is my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. That is all that he has ever wanted of you. In the parable of the prodigal son, the prodigal son who was dead and is alive again, Luke 15:24, represents you, the prodigal son who is dead, condemned to death for your crimes, and on returning in humility, disgrace, and repentance to his father, God, to serve his father and to do his will has come alive again, been reprieved, was lost and is found. On being refound, the prodigal son finds, to his surprise, that he is accepted back joyfully by his father as his child and not as his servant, as he expected. He then realizes that he was very foolish to leave his father and that his life will be much better living and learning from his father, who is much wiser than himself. God is the owner of the vineyard, the world, and he has sent his servants, prophets, and his son, Christ Jesus, and the husbandmen, you, have killed them. So he will have to punish the husbandmen, priests and people of this world, Matthew 21, 33 to 46, unless you repent. God is the owner of the vineyard, the world, and he has sent his servants, prophets, and his son, Christ Jesus, and the husbandmen, you, have killed them. So he will have to punish the husbandmen, priests and people of this world, Matthew 21, 33 to 46, unless you repent. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it around about, and digged a wine press in it, and built a tower, and led it to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen, that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandman took his servants, and beat one, and killed another, and stoned another. Again he sent other servants more than the first, and they did unto them likewise. But last of all he sent unto him his son, saying, They will respect my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and they cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They say unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits of their season. Jesus said unto them, 
Did ye ever read the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same is become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in your eyes. Therefore say I unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruit thereof, the ten lost tribes, the house of Israel. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whom it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and politicians had heard his parables, they perceived that he spoke about them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude, because they took him for a prophet. To function as a reformatory, everything would have to do, and does, fall into one of four categories. Teaching from God and hopefully learning by you, if not the lessons must be repeated over and over again until it is learned, with punishment each time that a test is failed, when will I ever learn? 2. Tests. To see what, how much, how well, or even if the lessons have been learned at all. The tests are set in such a way that they show God the result to the exact degree. God uses the devil for these tests by letting him tempt you, and then he tells you not to do what Satan says in a spiritual tug of war to see which way you voluntarily decide to go. This is the reason for needing free will. These things are sent to try us. Job 1.12 And the I am Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has in his power only upon himself put not forth your hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the I Am Yahweh. Chapter 2, 6-7 And the I Am Yahweh said unto Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but save his life. So went Satan forth from the presence of the I Am Yahweh, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. 3. Rewards For learning well and doing good deeds, taking the form of the true spiritual happiness, joy, and earned enlightenment. 4. Punishment For not learning to be good, and for continuing to follow the devil, doing evil, taking the form of various types of degrees of pain, both mental and physical, example, heartache, fear, illness, or injury, etc. Everything of any relevance in everyone's life falls into one of these four categories. You have to decide which one. A human school is based on these same principles and is a school within a school. But unfortunately, they teach worldly values instead of God's values. There is absolutely no such thing as coincidence. Everything is planned down to the smallest detail so that when things happen, you have to ask why. And the good telepathic voice within you will tell you why. Then, those who seek Will be able to make sense of their lives and follow the right path. Similarly, there is no such thing as luck. You must look for God or good and his workings in everyone, everything, every circumstance and encourage good in yourself and everyone around you. See God in the smile and the trust of a child or a loved one, in his love in giving you loving animals as faithful friends to play with and in the beauty of nature in harmonious surroundings. Get to know God and what is good, and feel his love. Hosea 6.6 6. For I desired mercy, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. Judge no one. Who does man think he is, that he thinks that he has the right to judge another, when he himself is bad and a fellow prisoner? Only God can judge, because only God knows what is good and can therefore judge justly. Men are only relatively good or bad, one to another, likewise their judgment, because there is no one good here in prison. All the good souls have gone home to heaven. It was false judgment that sent Jesus, the Nazarite, to the cross. Numbers chapter 6 And the I am Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, when either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves unto the I am Yahweh. And he shall separate himself from wine and strong drink, and shall drink no vinegar of wine or vinegar of strong drink, neither shall he drink any liquor 
of grapes, nor eat any moist grapes or dried. All the days of his separation shall he eat nothing that is made of the vine tree, for the kernels even the husk. All the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head until the days be fulfilled, in which he separates himself unto the I am Yahweh. He shall be holy, and shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. All the days that he separateth himself unto the I am Yahweh, he shall come at no dead body. He shall not make himself unclean for his father, for his mother, for his brother, or his sister, when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. All the days of his separation he is holy unto the I am. And if any man die very suddenly by him, and he hath defiled the head of his consecration, then he shall shave his head in the day of his cleansing. On the seventh day shall he shave it. On the eighth day he shall bring two turtles or two young pigeons to the priest to the door of the tabernacle of congregation. And the priest shall offer the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering and make an atonement for him for that he sinned by the dead and shall hallow his head the same day. And he shall consecrate unto the I am Yahweh the days of his separation and shall bring a lamb for the first year for a trespass offering. But the days that were before shall be lost because his separation was defiled. And this is the law of the Nazarite. When the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And he shall offer his offering unto the I am Yahweh, one he lamb of first year without blemish for a burnt offering, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish for a sin offering, and one ram without blemish for peace offering and a basket of unleavened bread, cakes of fine flour mingled with oil, wafers of unleavened bread anointed with oil, and their meat offerings, and their drink offerings. And the priest shall bring them before the I am, and shall offer his sin offering and burnt offering. And he shall offer the ram for a sacrifice of peace offering unto the I am. With the basket of unleavened bread, the priest shall offer also his meat offering and his drink offering. And the Nazarite shall shave the head of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall take the hair of the head of his separation and put it in the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. And the priest shall take the sodden shoulder of the ram and one unleavened cake out of the basket and one unleavened wafer and shall put them upon the hands of the Nazarite after the hair of his separation is shaven. The priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the I am Yahweh. This is holy for the priest and the wave breast and heave shoulder and after the Nazarite may drink wine. This is the law of the Nazarite who hath vowed and of his offering unto the I am for his separation beside that that his hand shall get According to the vow which he vowed, so he must do after the law of his separation. And the I am Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The I am Yahweh bless thee and keep thee. The I am Yahweh make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The I am Yahweh lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. If everyone kept and enforced God's laws and judgments, there would be no problems. However, man has, from arrogance, which got him sent here in the first place, made up his own laws. Man seems to think that he can rule this planet better than God, and look what a mess the world is in because of it. Your will shall be done on earth as it is done in heaven. If everyone did God's will, as all the prophets, God's messengers, have advised, he could put the world right very quickly, using people to do it and to make the world a better place for everyone to live in. Unfortunately, at the moment, almost everyone is doing Satan's will, 
and in doing so is making the world a worse place in which to live. You have made your bed, now you have to lie in it, or remake it. The world is your bed. When you are with people that you think are good here on earth, and you are having what you call a good time, which is usually actually a bad time, just remember that you are in hell and with people who are actually bad. Then, just try to envision what it must be like in heaven where people are really good and no one murders or steals or tells lies or rapes and everyone loves everyone and you can trust everyone. Wouldn't you prefer to be there? In the beginning, God created 